Well, good morning. How about the God energy in this room today? I know, I knew I wasn't the only one that felt it because, come on, from the minute that I walked in this place today, can I tell you, I felt it. I felt an energy, and I know that you guys are feeling it as well. Well, can I tell you, I, I want to welcome you here. If, if this is your first time here, so thankful that you've joined us here today. I want to also welcome you online if you've joined us that way. So blessed to have you in the house of the Lord today as well. Well, can I tell you, the last two weeks we've been taking a deep dive into some pretty tough subjects. Uh, Pastor Barry brought us um, through a uh, couple of messages, I, I tell you, that are kind of, you know, con- they, they gave us a lot to think about, right? A lot to chew on. And um, I'm no different than you. Ultimately, I, I walked away, especially from last week, going, man, I got a lot of things to think about. One of the things he, he, he said to us last week was we have to count our blessings. How many of you received that? that we need to count our blessings. Well, here's, here's the deal. I, I heard that it was actually really going to go along with the message I was preaching today anyways, but it made me think that we take things for granted, don't we? My, for, for example, you might be married and you take your spouse for granted. Like you, you didn't at first maybe, but ultimately now you've been married for a lot of years and so now you take them for granted. Like you don't realize the blessing that you have right there by you. Or maybe it's your kids. Maybe you took, it took forever to have kids, and then finally you did, but now they're teenagers. <laughs> yes, I'm personalizing this. <laughs> maybe it's your house. Look, maybe there was a point in time where you didn't have a home, or maybe you were even living on the streets. Who knows? And now you have a house, but you've had a house for years, so now you're taking it for granted. Maybe it's a car or your things, or maybe it's even your health. Can I tell you, um, in my 30s, I was doing okay. Now I'm in my 40s, and I'm realizing that your health, you have to really watch, right? Maybe even spiritual things that we take for granted. How about it? For each of us, these things that we take for granted, well... They're going to be different because we have different lives. We come from different backgrounds. But everyone in here today, and every one of you joining us online, I believe that you all have this one thing in common. All of us have this one thing in common. In November of 2020, my wife and my whole family came down with COVID. And can I tell you, it was a scary time for us, but it was a very scary time for Heather. It was during that time, very short period of time, that it went from bad to worse. See, she couldn't breathe. She has bad asthma. And ultimately, um, she couldn't breathe. She started having issues. And we should have called 911, but I rushed her to the hospital. And she collapsed on the way into the hospital. It went from her not being able to breathe to her struggling to hang on to life. It was a very, very tough moment for everyone. In fact, it was extremely close to her life ending because she was about to go on a ventilator. If it wasn't for an experimental medicine that they gave her, thank you, Jesus, she'd probably not be here today. Thankfully, she made a full recovery, but that moment in time was scary. I remember that I really could not even talk to her during that time because she couldn't get the words out. But this is what she would say. She would say, that in that moment, she realized every breath was a gift. Every breath that she breathed in and every breath that she breathed out was a gift of God. I think that that's an important thing for us to understand as we go into this morning. How many of you know that we take for granted the breath that we just breathed in and out? Come on, even just right now. We take that for granted. That is, until we are in a situation where breathing is difficult. Here's what I want you to know today. Our spiritual life, it's no different. It's no different. We often, I believe, walk around taking for granted the breath of spiritual life that he's given us, the rebirth of our soul, the blessings that he breathes into us each day, and therefore often treat them with contempt. That's a rough word, isn't it? But I think that's true. I think that's true for all of us at some point in our life at least, that sometimes that we have uh, spiritual amnesia, let's call it that, 
where God has done amazing things in our life, but we forget. We forget. So we, we treat them with contempt. And that's really what really stirred me last week when Pastor Barry said we have to count our blessings. Because I think sometimes we forget the blessings that are in our life. That is, until we're backed into a corner where we have to face our own spiritual condition. We often take, 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 and forget to give, don't we? Maybe we don't just forget to give, maybe we refuse to give. In a sense, we do a lot of inhaling the blessings and not a lot of exhaling. Take a lot of, we do a lot of taking, 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 we're not giving back to this world. That's why I've entitled this message today, Breathe, because how many of you know breathing is not just in the inhale, it's in the exhale as well. God, I just thank you for this day. God, we come to you with open minds, open hearts, open souls. God, that you would give us what we need in this today. As I stand up here on this platform, I want to, want to know that you are going to give me, you're going to help me to receive what you have for me as well today. God, I just pray that over anyone in this place online, Lord, that they would receive from you. And we just come with thankful hearts in the name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Well, let's talk for a little bit about this breath of life, okay? The breath of life. In Genesis 2, it says that God formed Adam from the dust. And then it says he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. God literally gave life to Adam. He gave life to him. Now, the Hebrew word used here for breathe well, let's just, I'm just going to put it this way. I'm not going to say it to you because it sounds like I'm either cussing or speaking Klingon. So if you guys want to go ahead and, and play the sound bite. Nafah. Nafah. Again, you don't want me to sound that out. <laughs> so this word is actually the word that's used for breathe here, that God breathe, and it means to exhale. It means to breathe upon right? Well, if we examine the word used in the phrase breath of life, it seems like it would be the same, right? But it's not. The breath of life in Hebrew, the word is neshama, neshama, and it means life force or spirit or soul. So look, we can read that verse and think, well, well, God's just talking about oxygen, right? Like he just breathed oxygen into Adam and no, no, that's not it. That, that's true, but he breathed so much more. He breathed so much more. If we put it all together, we can say that God exhaled his life force into Adam. Now, I want us to gain some context here today in this place for why this is so important. So I know I've done this before, but I want you to do this with me again. I want everybody in this place to breathe in through your nose real deep and then breathe out through your mouth. One more time. Now, if you're a believer in this place today, I want you to say this with me. God, thank you for giving me that breath. I think you need to understand something. The same breath that was given to Adam was just given to you. I think we get lost in that sometimes. I think we need to understand that the same breath that was breathed the spiritual breath that was breathed into Adam is the same thing that you just received. Genesis 3.19 says this, By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Since from it you were taken, for dust you are. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Without that breath, you have to hear me in this place today. Are you hearing me? Without that breath, you are nothing more than a human-shaped pile of dust. Right? Am I getting this wrong? Like, without that breath, you are a human-shaped pile of dust. And, and we have to keep that in mind. Now, look, you might be in this place today thinking I'm taking this thought a little to the extreme. Maybe that's you. But I don't think so. In my opinion, God did not just breathe life into Adam and then let biology take over, as if we can separate God from biology anyways, right? 
Like God didn't just start the engine and then walk away. Come on, do we believe that that's what it is? Because our Bible says something way different. It says that God sustains us. Psalms 54, 4 says that God is my helper. The Lord keeps me alive. It, yes, it's true. The Lord gave me life, but he keeps me alive. That's so important. This is an active role that God is taking right here in this place. If you are online, wherever you are, God is in the room with you taking an active role in what you are doing in this moment. And look, if that's not enough to convince you, let me give you a few more verses. Job 33, 4 says, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Job 27 Verse 3 and 4 says, as long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say anything wicked and my tongue will not utter lies. Isaiah 42, 5, thus says God the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. And finally, Acts 17, we find Paul is talking to the men of Athens and he's, in, he's amongst all of these idols, these statues of all these different lowercase g gods. And I can only imagine Paul just, you know, being angry and snickering at the same time, like, what are these people doing? And he, he starts to talk about this statue that they've called the unknown God. And this is what he says, verse 24. It says, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. In this room today, God is sustaining you. He is causing breath to enter you. He is indeed your life force. Can I tell you, if you are an atheist in this place, if you're not a believer, any kind of level of that, can I tell you, he is still sustaining you whether you believe it or not. He is the one that's giving you the life breath, the, the spirit that is in you. But it should cause us, I believe, to be asking some pretty tough questions. Like, why? Like, why, God? Why are you sustaining me right now? Why do you have me breathing up here on this platform? Why? Could it be that God has a purpose for my life over and above just taking the next breath? Is it possible? Like, is it possible that, that God has more for me? Or do you see ki uh, God as like a kid at like a pet store? You know, he picks out a fish and he promises his mommy and daddy that he's going to keep it alive. And so he goes home, puts it in a fish bowl, and then takes this long journey of just keeping the fish alive, you know, so that he can prove to his mom and dad that he can keep something alive and, and uh, you know, he can watch it swim around. Do we think God's like that? Do we think that God is just watching us squirm around here on this earth and that's the only reason why he keeps us alive? Well, here's the thing. Here at Christian Life Church, we believe that God has a purpose for every breath that he gives you. For every breath. In fact, we believe that so much that it has become the pinnacle of our mission statement here at Christian Life Church. See, we believe that God has brought us into this community so that we can help you to encounter God, to experience healing, to walk in freedom. And here it is, live with purpose, to live with purpose. There is not a single one of you in this place today. Nobody, I don't care where you're joining us from online, nobody doesn't want purpose. Every single one of us want purpose. We want to live with purpose. And I believe God gave us an example in the way he gave us life that can give us some direction on how we can begin to do that very thing. You see, when we think of breathing, we often think of inhale only. Think about it. If you really think about it, if you think about breathing, you're not, you're not really concerned of the exhale, right? That's just waste product, right? Like ultimately, um, it, it, it's just your body's waste and, and it means nothing. But come on, science has proved that's not the case at all. That our breath that we breathe out actually brings life to plants. But that's, but I, I don't want to go in a weird direction there. The thing is, is that we, can't, we cannot go forward here and, and say that 
The breath out doesn't mean the same thing as the breath in. I want you to think what would happen if you never exhaled. Come on, shout it out if you know. I don't know if we'd blow up. Here's the thing. Navy SEALs are said that they can hold their breath for six minutes. Can you imagine holding your breath for six minutes? There's also a guy named Budmir Sabat, which I hope I'm saying that right. I don't know if I'm saying it right. He holds the record for the longest breath ever held, 24 minutes and 37 seconds. I Look, I, ch- I checked, double-checked, and triple-checked this. This is an actual fact. Held his breath for 24 four minutes and 37 seconds. You know what that means? At 24 minutes and 38 seconds, he's dead. See, even Budmir Sabat had to exhale. He had to let it go. The point is, at some point, that breath that you breathed in is going to be the very thing that ends your life if you don't breathe it out. It's the very thing that will end your life if you do not breathe it out. We have to exhale. So one could say that our life is not merely sustained in the inhale, but also in the exhale. And it's my belief, as it relates to today, that that truth goes even deeper. I believe that God wants us to learn a spiritual principle in this. Here's the thing. God not only sustains us with a breath of air, but with that comes a spiritual breath as well, like we talked earlier. Look, it's not just air that you breathe in. With every breath, God is giving you something. He's giving you a gift, and you have to choose to do something with that. He calls to take us, take that spiritual breath in and do something with it. As believers, He has transformed us. Amen? He has given us rebirth in our spirit so that we can show the world around us who He is. What an amazing thing. As an ambassador, fellow ambassadors in this place today, isn't that a great thing? that we get the privilege to show this world who he is. Well, I came upon a story of a man that I wanted to share this morning with you. Well, I want to start out like this. How many of you have a Bible in this place today? Whether or not you have a physical Bible or you have it on your phone, I want you to raise it up in the air real quick. Doesn't matter if it's on your phone, if it's in your Bible or in in your hand as as a book. Now look, you can go ahead and put it down. If you're holding a Bible in your hands, my bet is you can read it. It's in your language, right? It's in your language. Well, for many of you, that language is English. For some of you, that may be Spanish, or maybe some of you have Hebrew Bibles or whatever the case. But ultimately, likely, you can read that Bible. Now, think of it like this. What if you couldn't? What if if right now, that Bible that you just held up in the air... You couldn't read. Like, it literally wasn't in a language that you could read. What would that be like? It's interesting. That would give uh, Pastor Barry and I a lot of power, wouldn't it? Because really what that would mean is that everything we know about, you know about God would come from us. We could get you believing all kinds of things. We could get you believing you got to give the church 90% of your income. Right? We could, we could tell you all kinds of things. Well, this is the state of things when a man named William Tyndale was alive in the 16th century in England. Most of the population had no way of reading for themselves the gospel message. It was in a language that they couldn't read, Latin. Tyndale happened to be one of the privileged individuals that received a top-notch education and to the point where he could read and write and speak in 10 different languages. Can you even imagine that? In fact, if I'm right, I think by the end of his life, he could speak in 12. Well, one of those languages happened to be Latin, which was believed at the time to be the, the, the language that Scripture was originally written in, though we know today that that's not true. Since William Tyndale could read for himself what the gospel message says, he could see right through what the church's, church was trying to do at the time. The power grab that they were trying to have, ultimately that they were trying to keep people in the dark by telling them things that weren't in Scripture. Many people were kept in the dark that way. It's actually said that one of his acquaintances actually told him it'd be better to follow the Pope's laws than God's. Yikes. That's scary. Come on. That's a scary thing. But Tyndale had appreciate, could appreciate what God had done in his life because God had blessed him immensely. But he also began to realize that God had called him to take those blessings and do something with them to exhale them as it were, right? 
to actually take what he'd been given and give them back to the world. He began to be moved by God to translate the Bible into English. Of course, the problem with that was it was illegal to do so. You know how illegal it is? it was? If I had a piece of paper, and I lived during that time, and on that piece of paper said, God loved, so loved the world, just that, just a piece of paper with that in English, I could be burned at the stake. That's how legal it was, okay? Yet Tyndale chose to continue anyways. He chose to take what God had breathed into him and exhale something amazing into this world. He was eventually captured, strangled, and burnt at the stake for his contribution to humanity. The world snuffed him out. Or did it? Come on. He didn't get snuffed out. It may, be, it may be true that his physical body stopped breathing, but come on, he lives in eternity. You know why I know that? Because he knew where his salvation came from. He knew that Jesus, what Jesus had done for him, and so I'm pretty confident this guy is in heaven, right? And so I know that, but can I tell you, in a sense, he lives on in the pages of that Bible that you just raised in the air. Every time you read your Bible... Every single time you are receiving something that was exhaled from Tyndale's life force, the life force that was given to him by God. That is amazing. Can I tell you his dying breath was a prayer for the people of England that the king of England would have his eyes opened by God. And they were. Within a year, there was an English Bible in every parish across England. Tyndale lives on. His exhale made a difference. He lived with purpose. Come on, that's what living with purpose is. And here's what I want you to know. You can too. We all can do that. We can live with purpose with whatever God has given us. God has given each of you gifts, not so that you would hoard them, but so that you would exhale them into this world, that you would give back what you've been given so that you might change the world around you because of what he's changed within you. He has breathed his life-giving, spirit-filled breath into us, so let's do something with it. Amen? We've been created to breathe in and breathe out air so that our physical body does not perish, but our spiritual self is no different. Our spiritual life is no different when we take, 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 but forget to give. We are denying a principle, I believe, that God has given us to keep us from spiritually perishing. Let us learn to breathe out, to exhale the blessings that God has breathed into us and begin making a difference in the world around us. I want to end this message today with a story I think that most of you will be familiar with. It's in Ezekiel 37. If we can have the worship team come on up. And I want to read this to you, and I want, to, I want you to keep in mind some of the things that we've talked about today and what it really truly means to live Verse, verse 1, Ezekiel 37, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and I will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews upon them, on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Don't mistake this. They were still human-shaped piles of dust. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O oh, breathe, and breathe on these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied as he commanded. 
and the breath came into them and they live and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. Stand on your feet, if you will. I've asked the worship team to play a special song this morning. I want One, I think, will speak really to what we've been saying today. And I can't wait to hear the words. And I, and I just want you to know, as you are listening to this song, as you're enjoying the worship, I want you to be asking yourself, what does it truly mean for me to live?
place today. I want to finish out by saying this. I said it already, but verse 10 says, So I prophesied as, I, as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived and stood to their feet, an exceedingly great army. Come on, do you feel like an exceedingly great army? God does not raise up armies so that we would stay in our tent. He raised up an army so we would advance against the enemy. That we would take back what has been taken from us. Let's leave this place today full of God's breath, ready to change the world around us. Amen. Let me pray before we leave. I'll just go ahead and do that. God, we just thank you that you have given us the breath of life. God, pray, we pray that we just, we just are getting, given direction on what to do with that in our own little world, in the things that we have. God, we just thank you for what you're doing and just pray just an abundance of peace as people leave this place today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.